This story that comes from central Utah, from a native tribe called the Timpanogos Indians, they are a tribe of Native Americans that inhabit a large part of central Utah, around the area from Utah Lake eastward to the Uinta Mountains and south into present-day San Pete County. A young Native Indian man, James claims his grandfather had a first-hand look at the strange activity occurring in Skinwalker Valley, Utah. Being a member of the Timpanic Tribal Council, he felt it his duty to prove skinwalkers were just a myth and not real. For a big part our tribal land is in the valley and could be used for a lot of good for our people. His grandpa has been dead for some time now, but before he passed, as a young boy he told me his true story of his encounter with a skinwalker in Skinwalker Valley. His grandpa lived in Mighton, in the state of Utah, Mighton being only 21.3 miles, 22 minutes, from Skinwalker Ranch, back then it was just Skinwalker Valley. Grandpa told his grandson James stories about skinwalkers and how they could take the form of any animal or anyone, even someone you know. James being young and interested, he asked him one day did you ever meet one, his grandpa paused for a few seconds, told him yes. The James asked when. Grandpa then explained, it was a very long time ago, before you were born, even before your mother was born. It happened when I was young and foolish, when I thought I could do just about anything. I went to the valley, the Skinwalker Valley. It's a valley where life never enters. Not even crows, snakes and even flesh-eating buzzards, not even the protectors of death, will never go out there. Even the protectors of death also fear the evil that lives there. Grandpa went out there to demonstrate to his people that nothing evil existed in the valley, nothing but false rumors and their own fears. But it turned out that Grandpa was completely wrong. He went to the Skinwalker Valley, in his old red Ford truck, to prove to everyone, what they believed was out there, was just a story, a story used to frighten them. When his grandpa reached the valley and recalled the grass was brown, like it had been burned and survived a fire. The dry trees with no leaves looked dead, but for some reason were still alive. After walking around a bit in the darkened valley, sun was still out, but it still had an eerie darkness to it, he told James his grandson he had come across a very old house, not that far from where he parked the truck. It was very old, as if no one had lived there for at least 100 years, and also noticed part of the roof was caved in. While standing there and looking at it from a distance, his grandpa finally got up enough nerve and decided to walk in the direction of the house and take a look inside. As the grandpa got closer to the house, he noticed the front door was missing and there were abnormal marks on the sides of the walls, outside of the house. Animal skeletons were scattered about and around the property, as if it were a sacred burial ground. The grandson tells how his grandpa heard a voice that was very familiar, a short distance away, he realized it was his grandmother's voice. She had died long ago, but he heard her voice anyway, as if she was only a few feet away. His grandpa knew that it was impossible for it to really be his grandmother and figured the spirits were trying to deceive him, using grandmother's voice they began calling him, for his life, for his skin, for his blood, for his soul. Grandpa explained, these were the lost evil spirits, that could change form, from man to beast at will. As Grandpa did a 180, to get the hell out of the Skinwalker Valley, one of the Skinwalkers ended up right in front of him, without thinking he looked up, right into its eyes. For an instant he was frozen, until it took Grandpa's form, but just before it took his form, I was staring at a tall gray being, a creature that had a huge head with oval black eyes. It was able to change itself into other creatures and even a human. I guess it took my form to confuse me and scare me. It was like looking into a mirror and it scared me so bad, I ran right through several of them, barely getting away. All of the skinwalkers began changing into hellhounds and were chasing James' grandpa, as he ran for his life. 
They screamed in his head, not out loud, but in my grandpa's head. They kept screaming with grandpa's blood on their hands, we will never forget you, we will always be watching you, no matter where you hide. Whenever the mother and James visited grandmother and grandpa, his grandpa would show him various objects, items that he had just purchased that was brand new, but were mysteriously broken during the night for his grandpa to see the next day. These evil spirits, or tall, evil-looking, gray beings, would also kill any of grandpa's animals left outdoors, so he began keeping his one dog left indoors. His dog Makwa, his name meaning bear could sense when the skinwalkers were very close and warned him. It had been two years since grandpa had told me his story and I began to wonder if it was just a story to scare and entertain me, instead of being real. Thinking I was old enough now to handle the truth, I told grandpa that I believed his story was not real and I was too old now to tell me made up stories just for fun. Grandpa looked at me with a blank look and then he turned around and pulled his shirt up and I saw his back was torn, not one part of his back was unmarked. All I could do was gasp as I looked at his back. There were white claw marks, too straight and too far apart to be made by a human. Grandpa said to me, I told you I barely made it out of there with my life, and these are the scars that remind me every day just how lucky I am to have escaped their sharp claws. I was frightened by the sight of my grandpa's mutilated back, enough that my mother knew it had really bothered me. As she screamed and shouted at grandpa for scaring me, I noticed that grandpa was just staring at the field across the road. I turned my eyes off of grandpa and saw a huge black wolf or maybe a dog with large sharp teeth and glowing white eyes. It was a sight I will never forget as long as I live. It was watching grandpa and he was watching it, waiting for it to attack him. It never did, it was waiting for the right time. I never saw that dog again. My grandpa died two years later. The doctors said his heart gave out but I knew that was not what happened. His forearm had fresh defensive claw marks. That was 42 years ago today. I looked back today and realized my grandpa was a very brave man. I have told this true story before, but I don't think anyone has really believed me. So I will try again, hoping the world today will take me seriously. Still, if you ever come across a skinwalker, Please whatever you do, never look into its eyes, it will never forget you. If you do, sooner or later it will have your soul. You may choose to fight and refuse to give in to the skinwalker's power. They will wait and wait for the right time to occur, which is when the skinwalker will take your life and then, you may walk with the dead souls taken by the evil black spirits of the skinwalker. A skinwalkers is a person with the ability to transform itself into any different type of animal at will, or maybe it is making us think it is. Maybe it is just in our mind the change is taking place. Which means a skinwalker could be a reptilian or grey. They are most frequently seen as coyotes, wolves, foxes, eagles, owls, or crows and I will bet you as in their true form. I had a grey make me think I was looking at a white owl with oval eyes. I was only about 10 feet away. Some can also steal the faces of different people, and could appear as someone you know. Again it is just in our mind the change is taking place. If you accidentally lock eyes with the skinwalkers, they can absorb themselves into your body and take control of your actions. This could be a form of possession, which greys and reptilians do all the time. Like a hunter thinks he is going down the correct trail and he is completely done a 180 and doesn't know it. Not for anything that both reptilians and greys eat human beings, reptilians eat our flesh and the grey being absorbs our body fluids and feeds on that. Largest activity recorded of the skinwalkers is those out at Skinwalker Ranch in the early 2000s. It is well documented that a deep underground military base exists next to Skinwalker Ranch. Even during the film, Skinwalker's Ranch, 
it was recorded that military defense was watching them. It is known that the Cabal has been working side by side with these alien beings. Also knowing they are stalking humans for food. The legend of the Skinwalkers originates from the Navajo, a southwestern Native American tribe. In the Navajo language, the word Skinwalkers is Yinaglashi and translates to he who walks on all fours. Skinwalkers have only entered the public discourse relatively recently compared to other phenomena. In 1996, a team of scientists ventured to a Utah ranch to investigate a series of bizarre phenomena. If their other powers weren't enough, skinwalkers are also said to be able to run incredibly long distances some say over 200 miles in one evening. Skinwalkers have a tendency to hang around graveyards, and can dig up graves at an impossibly fast speed. While they can take many forms, many people who see them today describe them as hollowed out dog-like animals. Skinwalkers are said to recruit more skinwalkers themselves. There is some dispute in how this happens, but some say that there is an official ceremony and that skinwalkers only take their form with a gathering of people and specific chants. With all of their advantages, it is said that you can kill a skinwalkers if you call them by their true, human, name. Skinwalkers are most commonly encountered near native reservations, though they have been seen all over the United States, Skinwalkers Ranch in Utah is the most famous. Some people believe the rake which is commonly encountered in the northeast is similar to a skinwalkers.